What's going on guys, it's your boy Jay here, back again with another DeFi Kingdoms update. In this video, we'll be talking about the recent expansion announcement, and we'll be going over some frequently asked questions, along with a little bit of alpha for the quest that just came out and the items that you can obtain. As some of you may already know, if you don't know, DeFi Kingdoms is originally on the Harmony blockchain, and they just announced their first cross-chain expansion to Avalanche. This new kingdom is going to be called Crystal Vale, and it will also have a new token, Crystal. DeFi Kingdom aims to make DeFi safe and accessible to newcomers. In the first step of the DeFi Kingdom Universe expansion strategy, Crystal Veil will make things even more accessible by bringing gameplay to the Avalanche ecosystem. All of the core features on DeFi Kingdoms will be available natively on Crystal Veil. Gameplay in DeFi Kingdoms is centered around hero NFTs. Hero NFTs are playable characters that you can level up, earn crystals with. As your heroes are assigned to go on quests, they'll earn XP increase their stats, find and craft rare items, participate in PvE and PvP tournaments, and more. The roadmap is packed with exciting features like customizable land and multiplayer combat. DeFi Kingdom's Crystal Veil will feature a limited series of Gen Zero heroes that will introduce new genes and classes to Crystal Veil, as well as unique quests, resources, buildings, NPCs, equipments, and pets. So here you can see this is what the new token is going to look like, and here goes the original token Jewel. Before you get riled up, they did say they do plan on making Jewel the main currency in the game. So don't get any ideas that it's going to depreciate. Even the Gen Zeros, they're keeping that very limited. People that own a Gen Zero now, your Gen Zero will not lose value. Later in the video, when we go over the frequently asked questions, Frisky and Tango did go into detail about that stuff. So stick around for that. But let's go into the tokenomics. Each realm of DeFi Kingdoms will feature a power token, which can be farmed in the gardens. Earned as rewards from quests, be unlocked via mining, and used to pay for in-game transactions including summoning, buying, selling, and renting new NFT heroes. As you all know, Jewel is the native token of DeFi Kingdom Serendale. If you don't know what Serendale is, that is the main map right now that we're all playing on. And it will play a pivotal role acquiring Crystal, the native token for Crystal Ball. The expansion strategy is set up to reward existing Jewel holders with Crystal airdrops, as well as unique items, lands, and more. Once the realm is opened up, notably the primary way to acquire crystal at launch will be via single stake and bridge jewel tokens in the ice gardens. Existing players will enjoy newfound utility for their jewel tokens and hero NFTs with the Crystal Veil expansion, enabling them to bridge their assets and explore new lands, run new quests, and enjoy new gardening and mining opportunities. New avalanche players will be able to get in early and can begin collecting jewels now with new liquidity pools on Trader Joe and Pangolin. Probably butchered that, but you got the point. So a little summary, earn crystal through single staking of jewel. Decks will have incentivized pools in the ice gardens that emit crystal as reward. Rewards for staking will be split between unlocked and locked crystal. The percentage unlocked each week increased by 2% until unlock rate reaches 100, at which point lock crystal will begin unlocking linearly over the course of the next year. Crystal is used for summons in a new realm and for purchasing and hiring heroes in the new realm tavern purchasing land, entering tournaments, and more. Crystal can be staked in the bank to earn a share of the in-game transaction. We also have some new artwork and design on the way. DeFi Kingdom's Crystal Veil will feature a new map with unique NPCs made up of familiar elements specifically designed around the wintry team of Crystal Veil. So let's check out some frequently asked questions. I believe we already knocked down the first two. What is Crystal Veil and what is Avalanche, AKA AVAX? I mean, I guess, Recently, after the AMA, it's pronounced Avox or something like that. You don't pronounce it Avalanche. Yeah, whatever. I guess I'll leave that in the video. Will Crystal Veil be a clone of Sarandale? Remember, Sarandale is the original map that we're all playing on now if you currently play the game. No. The basic structure of the game will be the same within the DFK universe. There will be a main currency for each world. Sarandale has Jewel, while Crystal Veil has Crystal. There will be a bank dex and in-game transaction fee sharing, a marketplace for token swaps, a garden for staking, NFT heroes to be summoned, traded, quested, and land to be developed. However, there will be many meaningful differences between Crystal Veil vale and Serendale to allow players a variety of choices about how they want to spend their time and resources. For one, the primary method of acquiring Crystal Veil vale token will be a single staking model, where players will have the opportunity to stake Jewel for rewards in Crystal. This allows players who are already invested in the DeFi Kingdom universe an opportunity to leverage their jewel as this new expansion launches to get in early. 
There will also be various crystal airdrops to jewel holders and hero owners. Additionally, a set of Generation Zero heroes will be minted with this expansion. We have consistently held that Gen Zero heroes should remain extremely rare. However, we promise new genetic lines would be introduced in the future, meaning that Gen Zero NFTs would need to be added to the gene pool. We will see two new basic classes, as well as new appearance genes, introduced when the initial Gen Zero Mint occurs in the XP. Crystal Veil will also have its own lore and history, which will be revealed through Easter eggs, interactable items, and unique quest lines, which will only be available from Crystal Veil's NPC. Likewise, as PvE questing launches in Serendale, many of its lore quests and NPCs will be unique and will only exist within that world. Make no mistake though, these worlds are connected and we do expect to find points of convergence in the lore that will satisfy players who are familiar with both worlds. If you don't know what they mean by lore, it's pretty much like the story, the background. One thing that they did mention though is there will be quest lines that span blockchains. So say you start in Serendale and then you head on over to Crystal Vale to finish up the second half of the quest. How do players connect between Crystal Vale and Serendale? For players to move between the worlds will be the docks initially. Crystal Vale will launch as Serendale did with the bank, marketplace, and gardens active but no heroes. Players will be able to begin staking jewel for crystal in the gardens and depositing their crystal in the bank. Then as portal and tavern areas become accessible in Crystal Vale, the docks will be updated to allow heroes and items to be transported between worlds. This will allow players to not only stake in both worlds, but to quest level their heroes and intermingle with new genetic lines by summoning both worlds as well. Earlier expeditions into the new realm will also entail increased rewards. What does this do for the game development? They mentioned great care was taken to ensure the roadmap for the development of DFK Serendale is not impacted in any negative way by the expansion. We have scaled up our team in preparation for this launch and we will continue to do so crystal veil vale will follow a similar roadmap that serendale did initially crystal veil vale will launch the bank marketplace and gardens will follow up with initial gen zero auctions the portal and the tavern following these we will see the launch of quest meditation circle serendale will see new features serendale will see new features launch in accordance with the roadmap with crystal veil vale equivalents launching sometime after our first roadmap had many more steps before we finished, including a variety of PvE quests, lands, equipment, deeper look into the lore of our worlds, and PvP. Crystal Veil vale success will allow us to continue to expand our team, reinvest into our long-term vision of DeFi Kingdom's universe. Big question that I've seen a lot in the AMA, what's going to happen to the game on the Harmony blockchain? Serendale contains 8 of eventually 16 base classes, and as such will also be the flagship offering of DFK, meaning the roadmap will continue to be developed there first. New features will launch in Serendale as well, creating an incentive for players to continue to play on Harmony. Serendale will continue to grow and thrive, with Crystal Veil vale bringing added value in the form of new genes and unique quest lines, so there's always more than enough content for everyone. So what does this mean for Jewel and Harmony? The new partnership is designed to incentivize further growth for Jewel, Harmony, and Avalanche. We have currently crafted our expansion strategy so that we can provide the maximum benefit to our existing players while also attracting more liquidity and players from other chains. In particular, the single staking model is key. Jewel tokens will have more intrinsic value with Professions Quest now live on Serendale and the option to single stake for a new token in Crystal Vale. Meanwhile, Avalanche users who may not be on Harmony will have an incentive to bridge and start earning in Serendale as they prepare for hero and profession launches in Crystal Vale. And since there will be more quests available in Serendale than in Crystal Vale for a good while, players will also have a reason to bridge onto the Harmony blockchain. There will be many quest arcs that go across chains to complete. Our goal is to onboard and host new players, provide new opportunity for ground level entry into the Crystal Veil token, and to increase the utility of both tokens and our NFTs, which will benefit the entire community. Now we're going to go over some of the questions after the AMA the other day. When will this take place? If you don't know who Frisky is, Frisky is one of the devs on the team. Frisky stated this expansion will be taking place quarter one of 2022. We are being very careful that this expansion won't negatively impact DeFi Kingdom's Harmony roadmap. Someone also asked, is Crystal just Avalanche wrapped Jewel? Frisky said, no, it's a new token. It will have one fourth of the supply of Jewel. Each expansion will follow the same model. Supply of the power token will be one fourth of Jewel. New lands, new quests, new Gen Zero base classes. There won't just be suddenly two X of everything out there. The utility for existing Jewel and heroes should go up. What if people dump their Jewel for Crystal? 
Frisky stated this would be counterintuitive because the only way to get Crystal initially will be to hold Jewel and stake it. If your strategy is to sell Jewel, you will have a bad time. Everything we will do is to expand the utility of Jewel. So don't go dumping your Jewel, guys. The next question, Tango answered. Tango, again, is one of the devs on the team. Why should we be excited about this expansion? The excitement to me comes from the additional exposure and getting into the new and getting this out into the hands of other people. If we isolate it here, it doesn't benefit everyone as much. You don't have to be on Harmony Chain for that ecosystem to benefit the Harmony Chain players. Increasing the utility of everything, everyone is going to be great. If you want to go experience these new lands, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine. Everyone will end up winning here. Will there be any benefits of being an original Gen Zero holder? Frisky replied, yes, there will always be benefits and we have many in store. Eternally, I've promised some airdrops specifically targeted towards Gen Zero holders. As far as actual utility goes, you'll be able to bring those into new chains and start summoning slash renting them out on other chains. We'll be adding two new classes on that chain and that will entail new advanced classes that you'll have to find. We already went over this earlier in the video, but somebody did ask, what are some things you can do to start preparing for the launch in Avalanche? Frisky responded, you and everyone here are probably in a good spot to win this expansion. Having Jewel will enable you to bridge and stake over there will be big. Staking here now will qualify you for new snapshots that will be rewarding items for Crystal Veil. Vale. If it were me, I'd be staking in the bank for X Jewel. If you have those jewels get bridged over, you can also be eligible to enter into some snapshots on those chains. If you are just here to play the game and earn, probably just stick with what you're doing. Those were some of the questions that jumped out to me after the AMA. Long story short, if you aren't exposed now, start staking in the bank, maybe in the gardens as well if you're feeling a little bit riskier, but definitely the bank so you can get that X jewel. So when the time is right, you're already there and you can just bridge on over to the next realm. So to wrap up this video, we're just going to go over some of the uh, rarity for the new items that came out with the quest. Remember recently, fishing and foraging did come out. So we have our bloater, 23%, red gill, 6, iron scale, 9, lantern eye, 9, silver fin, 1%, sailfish, 1%, shimmer scale. I actually got one of these this morning, 0.9. I still have not gotten an egg. Foraging, we have ragweed, 23%, rock root, 9, red leaf, 6, dark weed, 6, Amber Taffy 4%, Gold Vein 1, Swift Thistle 0.9, and of course you can see the eggs are the hardest to obtain. I also haven't gotten a rune either. I guess my luck is just pretty poop right now. But I am expecting to get a blue egg first out of anything else because that mythic I have is a beast at fishing. So hopefully I can pull an egg soon. If you guys are wondering about when the other quest will be releasing, gardening gardening comes out 1215 and mining comes out 1222. So shout out DFK Citizen for this infographic. You remember the homie Albus, they made an updated infographic with everything that you need. So I'll throw this in the community tab as well. Don't forget to hit and subscribe. But we have our class profession and stats. We have our summoner combo. So the percentage of what you can get when you summon and how hard it is. So I had a 0.2 chance of summoning that mythic when I did summon it because I used two commons. I was really trying to shoot for a dark knight and I ended up pulling a mythic, which is definitely way less likely. We have our hero tree and we have our summoning cost per hero. So again, I'll throw this infographic in the community tab. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's continue to build this DeFi Kingdom community, continue to support each other and help each other out and no hiding alpha from each other. My next video, I am going to show you guys how I acquire heroes nowadays and what the tools are that I use. Until then, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.